Hi guys, the other day I made this swordfish in a samphire dashi sauce and it was just epic. The swordfish was so meaty and the dashi gave such a lovely taste of the sea and the samphire gave a really nice briny saltiness. Start off by making the dashi. This is a Japanese seaweed broth but I make my own version so don't complain when I use more than the traditional ingredients. First you'll need two sheets of dried kelp. Next, I'm using some dried anchovies. I'm using 10 of them here, which is a traditional ingredient in dashi, or instead of this, you could use dried bonito flakes or a combination of the two. So just set them aside along with the kelp. So one ingredient that isn't always used in dashi broth is dried shiitake mushrooms. I really like them and I've got about six of them here that I'm going to set aside with the other dried ingredients. Now, I don't think celery is often used in dashi, but it just gives such a beautiful base flavor to broths and soups. I'm taking one stick and breaking it up and adding that as well. Along with one onion that's just halved. I didn't even peel this because the skin will give the dashi a nice color. Now, a good knob of ginger. That's probably around 60 grams and I'm not even bothering to peel it. Just slice it thickly and set it aside. Now take four or five cloves of garlic and don't bother to peel them either, but just bash them with the side of your knife. And take everything over to a large saucepan or stock pot and just pile everything in. Then top it up with about two litres of recently boiled water. Bring it up to the boil again and allow it to boil for about 15 minutes before you turn the heat down to medium low, clamp the lid on and allow it to simmer for at least one hour. Then come back to it, take the lid off and with a slotted spoon remove all the vegetables from the broth and if there are any small little bits at the bottom afterwards just pass it through a fine sieve. This can be made well in advance and used throughout the whole week for soups and stews and sauces. When it's time to start cooking take your swordfish steaks, I'm doing enough for two here, and season them both well with salt and pepper on both sides. Then I set them aside to let them rest a while because I was steaming some baby potatoes which took about 35 minutes and the swordfish doesn't take that long at all. I also brought my dashi broth up to a gentle simmer before I put on the swordfish. Then when the potatoes had about 10 minutes to go I took a large frying pan and placed it over a really high heat and then I added a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil to it. Once that was really, really hot, I then added the swordfish steaks to the oil and don't touch them when they go in. Just leave them for two minutes without being touched before you flip them over and leave them for another two minutes untouched as well. Two minutes later, just take them out and let them rest on a warm plate for just a few minutes while you make your sauce. Do this by adding a knob of butter to the pan that you cooked the swordfish in. And once that's melted, go in with about 100 grams of really well washed samphire. Now stir fry for literally 30 seconds before you go in with a tablespoon of plain flour or potato flour if you want it to be more Japanese. Mix that in as well so that it's all coating the samphire. Then you're going to add two ladles of the hot dashi broth. Just add one at a time first, stirring it in to let it thicken in the flour before you add the next one. Now stir it up to let it thicken again. I didn't add any salt to the dashi before now because it's better to season it depending on the dish you're using it in. So taste the sauce now to check for seasoning and adjust if needs be. Then take it off the heat and I think it's easier to serve it at the table. Just spoon it over your swordfish and I served it with the steamed baby potatoes and some white asparagus. And the whole combination of the meaty swordfish with the sea flavoured dashi sauce worked so well. The salty samphire was actually the only seasoning that the sauce had in the end and it worked so well. Thanks Millie for watching guys. I hope you liked this recipe and will give it a go yourself. If you do, be sure to let me know how you got on. You can let me know via social media. You'll find all the links to my accounts in the description below as well as the link to my blog where you'll find this full recipe at www.rookiecook.org